Hi everyone, you're watching How Warm Flash videos and today's a very, very special episode because we've got Sean from Coinbase Asset Management joining us in for this chat. Uh, welcome to uh, to this chat, Sean, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Sean Martinak. I'm a portfolio manager at Coinbase Asset Management and I also am the, the lead product lead for Project Diamond, which is an infrastructure that we're building to help bring uh, digitally native instruments, markets and services um, to our client base. Perfect. So tell us a bit more on Coinbase Asset Management. What's the vision behind? What's the team like? What are you guys building? Coinbase Asset Management is really designed to help uh, build the products necessary for our clients and our partners to capture the long cycle of digitally native innovation and disruption that's going to happen in capital markets. So our team is the most diversely experienced group of professionals I've had the opportunity to work with. We span leaders from uh, macro systematic strategies, cross asset class, um, directional investing in liquid markets, uh, commodities trading, private asset classes, as well as a deep knowledge in the technology around the, the digital asset universe. So how did Coinbase Asset Management get started? What was the core problem that you were solving here? Yeah, so the, the kernel of the company started with our CEO, Eric Peters, um, and another firm, a firm called One River Asset Management. So Eric's background running a, a global macro, a very technically driven global, global macro shop, um, led him to a client base that was looking for ways to capture the disruption associated with monetary debasement, as that became a major topic in uh, late 2020 or throughout 2020. Um, so in working with uh, a, a particular client, Eric and the team helped them put on one of the largest positions in digital assets at the time, uh, one of the largest institutional positions ever, actually, right around Thanksgiving of 2020. And that consisted of a portfolio of Bitcoin and Ethereum. So through that initial trade, there was a lot of qualitative experience, but technical experience gained in terms of how to work with partners to put on institutional size portfolios and assets that were still in early stage of their maturity. Uh, that involved working very closely with Coinbase and also formed the seed of the relationship that many years later led to the acquisition by Coinbase um, of our team to be Coinbase Asset Management. So that trade turned out to be a, a terrific success and the firm was able to return over a billion dollars in net returns to its investors over the course of basically by the end of the first quarter of the following year. And it laid that foundational brick for what One River Digital became, uh, which was later required to become Coinbase Asset Management. Fantastic, that's quite a story. So Coinbase has this global vision to increase economic freedom all across the world. How does um, this particular acquisition play into that? Increasing financial freedom happens at the smallest level, at the retail level. But I think financial freedom and the, the efficacy of global capital markets, it's extremely important to think about this disruption of access, of efficiency gains, of new product design happening across the stack from the smallest retail customer to the largest institutional customer. Now, our focus as a business has always been on those large institutions. Many of us have worked to worked throughout our careers to help those large institutions manage pools of capital uh, on behalf of small and large uh, ownership bases. So we come at it very much through that lens. How are we going to design the best products possible to help navigate the long cycle of digital disruption? All right. So let's zoom in a little bit into the benefits of this. Um, how do the institutional clients benefit from the Coinbase asset management ecosystem currently? Yeah, well, look, Coinbase has a tremendous client base, both on the retail and the institutional side. Our focus is obviously the institutional world, but I think what we're, our job is to do is to build those products that can help them put their hard-earned capital to work and to evolve how that capital needs to be put to work as, as digitally native capital infrastructure starts to permeate not only crypto token markets, which is obviously a starting point, but really the broader set of asset classes and global assets that they're going to apply to in the near future. So we see a, you know, a multi-decade vision here, and the products are not only going to need to be well calibrated for the point we're at today, but to evolve in line with that, that long cycle of disruption. And that's our job is to bring those products to bear and to make sure that they're offered to the client base so that they have the opportunity to continue to participate in the best way for them. Great. Uh, talking about trends and uh, institutional adoption and ecosystems, what are the top couple of trends that you see coming up industry-wide in the next two years? I think the merging of traditional instruments and capital markets with crypto native tooling, I think is going to be the major driver. My, my personal opinion, but I think it's likely to lead to the longest and largest cycle that we've seen yet predicated on, on this disruption. 
because it will start to finally incorporate traditional markets as opposed to being a separate a separate field of asset creation and asset management. So I think as they merge, that really is going to be the driving force of the story. It's very difficult to predict what you know new creative minds and, and the next generation are going to come up with in terms of innovations. But I think as a as a core theme, uh, going from a one trillion market cap to many hundreds of trillions of dollars incorporated in these tools is going to be the story of the next decade in finance. That's an exciting decade to look forward to. So what is the Coinbase asset management approach to security as a whole? Well, look, I think we're part of the Coinbase entity now, and Coinbase has built a tremendous brand based on trust with its client base. They have the best track record and are, most, are the most trusted company in, in crypto technology. Um, so I think the first order of business is to honor that brand and try to live up to those standards. Uh, which is our primary focus. Now, the question is, how do we do that? I think when it comes to building infrastructure, when it comes to, you know, the, the Project Diamond is what I'm really, uh, what I'm responsible for and what I'm kind of here to talk about in conjunction with our work with, with Hubborn. And I, that's the sort of central statement for Project Diamond is to help finance scale like software. So as we build software that's going to allow financial markets to scale rapidly and efficiently, we're going to need third-party partners that can really increase the quality of our thinking around what can go wrong and to really test us and to be partners in making us better day by day by day. So that's what the, the relationship we formed with Hallborn represents. And I think that, you know, through that process, through developing communication, uh, through choosing partners that are some of the best in the business at finding where things are, are going to break at offering you, you know, critical feedback at an early stage so that it doesn't accumulate, so the problems can't accumulate. And then being hyper responsive as we address them in line and we iterate with those partners, um, I think that's critical. And that's 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 going to help us drive towards some of the most secure and some of the most high performance products as we bring as we bring Project Diamond and other infrastructure to bear. Yeah, talking of Project Diamond, what were some of the top level security needs that uh, also drove you towards looking for external auditor partnerships? Yeah, critical for us. So the core thesis of um, the design, the architecture of Project Diamond is that the technologies built on top of cryptographic and digitally native rails are hyper important because they bring something new to the digital the internet experience, right? They bring property rights into this internet economy, but isolating them and thinking about building systems on blockchains and cryptographic computing networks alone is, is not optimizing across the range of trade-offs as you build larger scalable systems. So we have always built hybrid systems where blockchains are used for what they're best at, property rights, trustless computing, the robustness of decentralization. But at the same time, we want a user experience that looks and feels much more like Web2 so that it, it can integrate with the regulated traditional financial mainstream and really start to expand capital markets that are benefiting from those tools. So we've been building hybrid systems since day one. As we searched for security partners, Hallborn quickly rose to the top of that list because of their experience working across a range of technology stacks and having the deep experience to be able to integrate decentralized networks, cryptographic computing into that broader vision and to help us test all aspects of it. Sounds great. And how has the relationship worked out thus far with Hallborn? Yeah, it's been excellent. I think it's not only a firm of great, uh, you know, uh, I'd say hackers, uh, folks that really know how to attack a system and to, but also how to communicate about the philosophy behind it and, and the learning that can be gained by going through that process with, with that rapid iteration and the communication along the whole way. So I'd say it's been everything we've expected and we're, we're getting better by the day and we're really looking forward to continuing to work with them. All right, Sean, this has been a wonderful chat and I got to learn a lot more about Coinbase Asset Management Group. So thank you so much for joining us in today. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk with you. This was great. Thank you.